Would you please? Would you please just get the Thank you. Nolly! Nolly? Nolly, bit of a problem. Tell me. I'll fix it. What's wrong? It's the people outside. There are thousands of them. I mean, literally thousands. There's up to 10,000 people standing outside. And the problem is? They're in short. That's a problem because? They've come to see Nolly, but it's Meg who's getting married, not you. It's your character. I still can't see the problem. Meg owns a motel in Birmingham. It has 16 chalets. 16. I have to put this show in there, and I can't, for the, the love of God, work out why I would be showing 10,000 people at her wedding. Well, then the problem is you. If 10,000 people have turned up to show their love and the staff in all 16 chalets to stand out there together, tell me what... Not me. It was once a family home, but when my husband... Sorry, died, but, Poppy, we did specify a Birmingham accent. You might have. I did not. It's just that... I think the rest of television speaks in RP, and Poppy gives us a chance And I to... said no. To continue, it was once the family home, but when my husband died 18 years ago, I converted it to survive. You and you? Well, I am distraught. Well, yes, understandably. Did he tell you why? He said it was a professional decision and it's time for the show to move on. Yes, but why me? I was told. In fact, Denton said six months, which would see me off screen February, but I fully expect to find work immediately. Christmas? Oh, yes, I thought you could kill me off. Oh, for Christ's sake! Don't be so November. Done! Good. <clears throat> Problem? We haven't decided how she dies yet. We've got to have meetings. Life is strange. All the same. I mean, look I at really poor Joe Richardson. Shot her last scene, walked out of that studio, flew to the Seychelles, went for a swim, drowned or murdered, we still don't know, and that was real life. Yes, but... That's it, isn't it? That's the point. That's our job, to sit up here and choose. Death by gunshot, death by dog, death by canal, death on a wedding day when Maureen fell under the wheels of a bus. How unlucky was that? But that's what we're paid to do. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? No, I'm not having that. Charles Denton can recline in his London club, not me. I've done the hard work. I left home when I was 14. Ran off of the circus, literally. I lived with the family of Coco the Clown, and let me tell you, backstage with clowns, that's savage. I have seen it all, Molly. And why the fuck do you care? It's not real death. But still. My hands are tied. Orders from above, and the budget has been drawn up for next year without... He was my son for 18 years. He died four months but ago. But you're not dying. This is Meg we're talking about. Back to work. I'm sorry, but it's your own fault. You went to the papers. You crossed the line, Nolly. You told them things were strictly confidential. And this is my problem. Meg's exit has turned out to be a miracle. The show's never been so popular. We're everywhere. The whole country is talking about us, so I can't say anything to anyone. But you have a duty towards me. Maybe. Back in the old days, yes. But do you know what happened? A shot rang out. A bullet that changed the world. That gunshot in the office in Dallas, J.R. Ewing hit the floor, and television will never be the same again. Now is our chance. To be as big as that. To be bigger than who shot JR. And I'm not gonna spoil that for anyone. Now, uh, where were we? Excuse me. The press can speculate all they like, but I am cleverer than them. We have one script with one ending, and I have that locked away where no one can see it. Right, that's 
seems to work. If we're good to go, everyone, thanks very much. Nolly, you happy? Am I happy? Yeah, is everything okay? Well, it depends. You promised me the biggest suite on the QE2, but you didn't promise me. So, we end up shooting refugee stowaways. When she gets to New York, has anyone in the office? I apologize. I wish things were better. Now, can we go? Yes. Okay, ready, Jane. Yes. Nolly? Ready. Break a leg. Thank you. Check. Scene 14. Farewell to Meg. And. Action. Got this bit to yourself. If anyone tries to say hello, we've got the crew to keep an eye on you. I will need you to stand here. Mm -hmm. Does that work? Whatever you say. And we'll be down there, and as soon as the ship moves off, I will give a cue to Jane. When she starts waving, you wave back. I will cue the brass band. We'll keep recording for as long as we can. Just keep waving all the way into the distance. What are they playing? Uh, a life on the ocean wave. Bit celebratory. Glad to see me go. OK. I suppose this is it. We'll say goodbye. Final check, Cyrus. And on the day I got married, <laughs> Nolly offered me a Rolls Royce. And she drove me. Oh, no. Thank you. All right, if we can make tracks, you'll take your cue off, Jane. I know how it works. Off we go, then. And cue Jane. Cue the brass band! Give it a bit more! Give it a bit more, Jane. I am. Uh... It's not really working. What, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, just give, give it more. Oh, give it more! So stupid. That's it! Good to see you. You look wonderful. Thank you. Excuse me. Hello, yes. Um, coffee for me with milk, thank you. Nolly? Nothing. Are you sure? Absolutely. Is that just the one coffee then? Yes, thank you. OK. Sorry, but I'm a very big fan. Thank you. I hope you don't mind me asking, but mm? why'd they get rid of you? Mm. Ask him. OK. <laughs> One coffee. <clears throat> nice to catch up. And there's that charity night thing for Birmingham City Council. The funny there. thing is, by chance, someone told me. In fact, I wrote it down. Because, because I'm a prima donna. Because I'm delusional. But who said so? If he did, if he was actually... Well, he might have said... There were problems with the show. I mean, he was never in studio. He would never see rehearsals. I don't imagine he's watched a single episode of Crossroads in his entire life. So where did his information come from? Jack? Who told him? I never said those exact things. A bully? I didn't say that. Delusional? I didn't say that. A prima donna? I did not say that. Difficult acid? Oh, my Christ, you are difficult. Of course you are. Who are we kidding? Every day, every scene, every decision, you're a nightmare. And don't sit there and pretend you didn't know. You're very hard work. At lunch? For God's sake, Jack. A dinner. You ax me in public. Now look me in the eye. No. 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 I just don't understand. I'm sorry.
all right. I would complain to Charles. That's how it works, it goes upwards. You complain to me, I complain to him, but I never thought he'd listen. That's where it all went wrong. I was used to old school ATV where they would puff on cigars and pass a port and do so at all, and then suddenly I have this, this brand new boss who takes me at my word and does something about it. I mean, a boss actually doing something? My God. And I couldn't backtrack. I'd said what I'd said, so... Here we are. In a way, yes. Never really worked, Crossroads. What says the producer? Coronation Street is about the working class. Emmerdale Farm is about a farm, a crossroads. It's about a motel. We don't have motels. People don't know what a motel is. They think it's a typo. The whole thing is based on a mistake. But we couldn't stop. The one thing that machine can never do is stop. So on we went, episode after episode after episode. Got alive, no wonder we fight. And I suggest the fight goes on. Come back, Nolly. Huh. No, I mean it. That's why I wanted to see you today. I miss you. I want you to come back. I thought Venice. Meg in Venice. Adam and Jill get married. They go on honeymoon to Venice. And I thought, what could be better if Adam arranged a little surprise? They walk into a restaurant in Venice. And there is her mother, Meg, in all her glory, in Venice, real Venice. Good morning, Miss Gordon. So, everyone, scene 15. I think Adam and Jill arrive in the doorway uh -huh. and they stand there. Adam says he's booked a special table, but, damn it, there's somebody sitting there. And that's you, Nolly. You're over here. You'll be in this chair, if that works for you. Mm-hmm. Thanks. With your back to the camera. Oh, nice angle, Bob, with the fountain in foreground. So, Adam says, I'll have a word with whoever she is. Mm -hmm. He crosses the floor, OK, Tony? OK. Yeah. And I stay by the fountain? Yes, that's right. You stay over there just watching. So, Tony, come to the table, you talk to the woman, you stand here. OK. There's no actual dialogue. No, no, it's silent, because we're seeing it from Jill's point of view. We don't need to cover this, Jim. Just say, excuse me, or something, because Adam's pretending. Say, uh, excuse me, the table is booked for that lady over there, and you can indicate Jane, and then Nolly, you turn. You simply turn around. And that's it. The return of Meg Mortimer. You turn around, you look at your daughter, and the entire nation So, Tony says, that lady over there? Oh, you can do it with a gesture. I can do it with a gesture. Is that OK? What do you think, Nolly? Does that work for you? Is that all right? We can move it. We, we, could, uh, we could choose a different table or we could shoot from another angle, but... What do you think? Good. OK, if we could set that up, please! It's a very happy shoot, though, Guys, isn't it? Tony, opening positions, please. Oh, yes, it's lovely. Excellent. OK. Everyone, I think we'll record this one. Final checks, please. Everyone set? Guys? And cut. Check it. I think I can say on behalf of us all, welcome back, Miss Noel Gordon. <laughs>